talk a little bit about what search engine optimization is. I'm going to try and keep everything at a fairly high level, uh, partly because I don't know all the details and I don't know all the history of this, and uh, so I'll only make a fool of myself. But uh, at the same time, I don't want to get into a lot of the weeds or anything like that. I'll talk about what sitemaps.org and schema.org are, um, and then I'll tell you about how EDI is using this metadata standard or protocol and basically the short-term effects that we've seen so far and what other initiatives are out there um, that are using the same approach and what they bring to the table. So let's go ahead and get started. So the motivation is that I, th I think we still all agree that finding the right environmental data on the internet is still a difficult task to accomplish. Um, you can replace right the, the quoted word there with whatever word you think fits in there, but it's either not correct or it's not quite the, the data that we're looking for. Uh, it's just still really difficult. Each of the repositories generally have their own search interfaces and they generally work really well within their own little niche. Um, there are efforts like Data One that is doing a great job of aggregating a whole bunch of different types of data and exposing it through uh, their search interface. But I think people still like to go with the simplest um, path to find content on the internet, and that's usually going to a search engine. And if I just say Google, it's just a slip, because I really mean everybody, but I use Google a lot. So, you know, we're talking about Google as a search engine. People just still like to use Google, and it's still hard to find the right data sets out there for people. So we're trying to facilitate this process, making it better. So what is search engine optimization? Um, this is kind of a, a modified quote from Wikipedia, but it's just basically uh, optimization, it's a search engine optimization is the process of affecting the online visibility of a web page uh, in a search engines, and I'm gonna emphasize this unpaid results because we all know if we pay money, we can get those those really good search results off to the side and we know exactly what they are. But it's these kind of what they call natural or organic or kind of earned results. And it's based on the content that you're presenting out to the internet. Uh, so that's basically what you know the definition is of search engine optimization. So SEO actually benefits um, both users of the internet and websites that push content out to the internet by ranking these pages to the top of the search results. So if you're looking for something specific, um, and we all know when you go to Google and you search on something, most of the time you get good hit, hits to the top of the page, but you kind of always have to scroll down sometimes to find more uh, information. But it's really that, you know, whatever is most relevant content floats to the top, and that's what we're trying to do within the realm of environmental data search. So when this happens, it just results in a more satisfying experience for both the user and for the website because of the exposure of the website. And it's generally a win-win for all. So it's still kind of the optimal solution to finding this data. And we're trying to do, you know, make it so that it works for both the end user, the consumer of data, and those who produce the data and push it out via the internet. So how do we implement search engine optimization for environmental data? Well, it's kind of a good question. Um, you know, if you go back to kind of the old school webmasters and trying to promote websites to uh, these search engines, there are always hacks that they had or, you know, games that they could play or gaming the, the search engine optimization by basically overloading the metadata tags within the web page with keywords that the search engines were looking for. And eventually the search engines would figure out that they were being gamed by these websites webmasters and then they change their algorithms and such and it just didn't really work very well and I know um, for example the the repository that we have has been around since 2013 you could go to Google and just do a general search for some of the data and sometimes it would show up and you'd get what you'd expect but more often than not you wouldn't find the right data at all so the question is is how do we actually expose content to search engines to make it efficient and correct in terms of the indexing and the results that you see on the internet. Well, the simple thing is that we have to just tell search engines what web pages to index, and we have to tell them exactly the details about the content on that page of what to index. And so there's been this, this effort with this thing called sitemaps and schema.org metadata protocols that have been available. And I really don't know too much the history. Somebody may, you know, who on the, who's also on the, the webinar may know more of the history of this process. But what they are is that they're really two complementary protocols 
that basically support one another. They're markup protocols basically providing metadata for search engines uh, so that the web pages can be found and the content on those web pa um, pages can actually be indexed uh, correctly. So sitemaps.org, in my opinion, it's kind of a table of uh, contents of sorts, and it tells the search engines what pages you want them to index. Schema.org is a markup vocabulary to tell the search engines um, basically the detailed information about the data set that you want to expose through those search engines. So they work together basically. Now I just want to point out that schema.org metadata it's a markup vocabulary for lots and lots of different information on the internet, just not environmental data sets. But there is a subset for data sets. Uh, it's not perfect yet, it's still evolving, but it does work pretty well. And I'll show you some examples towards the end of this presentation. So how does sitemaps.org metadata work? Uh, as I mentioned, it's kind of this big table of contents and it provides uh, links, uh, direct links to web pages that the search engine should index. So in this little graphic here, it just shows um, basically you have the sitemaps file. The file itself contains URLs to the individual pages that you want indexed in there. But the really nice thing about it is you can leave out those web pages that you don't want indexed so that they're kind of ignored by the search indexing process. Now there's no guarantee that they're ignored. And there's also no guarantee that the, the pages that you have in the sitemaps will be indexed in a timely fashion. And I'll talk a little bit about that later on also. So what is sitemaps.org metadata? It's really just a simple XML protocol uh, that allows a website to tell the search engine exactly where to find a web page that should be indexed. Now, there's only one required field in this XML protocol. This is the location field. And this is just an example that I pulled off the sitemaps.org site. And this just tells the URL, the, site, um, the search engine, the URL exactly where to find the web page to be indexed. There are three also optional elements that you can add to the schema for each URL. One is the last modified timestamp, so you can tell the search engine when this was last modified, how often it free, um, changes, so this is the change frequency, and this can vary from, I think, yearly down to hourly, but the, the details are actually on their site. And then you can also give it a priority, and the priority is based not on anything um, out in the broader internet, but only on that particular site. And the priority is between zero and one. So if you have pages that um, you want to be indexed uh, more quickly, or that should take precedence over some other web pages, you can actually set this priority. Now for our site, we actually don't use any of the optional content at this time, but as I said, this whole system is somewhat uh, evolving and we're really kind of new in this. Uh, so we're, we're only using this location field. And I'll show you an exact example of how we're using this here in a minute. So each one of these sitemap files, as I mentioned, it's just an XML file that res uh, resides on your web server. It's limited to the number of links to 50,000 links in a single file and or a volume of 50 megabytes. So you have to be kind of careful. You know, most websites really don't have that many pages that they really want linked. But data repositories can have upward of hundreds of thousands of different links that they want to have indexed. So we have to be careful here. So the standard from sitemaps.org allows a single sitemap file to be broken into these 50K chunks, and they can be referenced via what they call a sitemap index file. So it's kind of a table of contents for sitemaps, which the sitemaps then is the table of contents of the web pages to be indexed. The sitemap, both the sitemaps index file and the sitemaps file, they're generally located in the website root directory, and they're usually referenced through the robots.txt file. If you're not familiar with the robots.txt, briefly, robots.txt has been around for a while. It provides a mechanism for webmasters to tell search engines what content uh, is open for them to index through the allow section of the robots.txt, and there's also a disallow section. Now, with the robots.txt, you have to be careful because not all search engines and certainly rogue sites do not actually you know, follow those recommendations. But within that robots.txt, you can also state the sitemaps.file location. And as search engines find the robot.txt file, they will find that sitemaps file and then find all those other web pages that you really want indexed. 
What about the schema.org metadata? So it's structured metadata about data on the internet, uh, pretty simply. As I mentioned earlier, there's this data set subset of the full corpus of schema.org metadata. Uh, the definition uh, per the schema.org website is that the data set is a body of structured information describing some topics of interest on the internet. Now, using this kind of information, this is a little bit of an aside, but Google had recently announced a beta, and we all know about Google and the beta um, products that they push out, that beta may last for years and years and years. But anyway, so Google has this data set search tool now that's available, and it uses uh, the schema.org data set subset of metadata to index so it knows exactly, um, so basically disambiguates the content on that web page. It knows exactly how to index it. And there's actually a recommendation from Google how to use this data set um, metadata. And if you, once these go out, so these are live links, um, we'll go ahead and post, I believe, the presentation so you can access these, but you could just um, kind of redundant here, but Google, Google data set search tool, and you can also find some of the additional information through Google there, including their recommendation for the metadata there. So a little different than sitemaps um, content, the schema.org metadata, so th there's, there's, how do I say this? There's basically four or five different protocols you can encode the this, this schema.org um, metadata into. The one that's highly recommended, the one that's used probably most commonly is what's called JSON-LD, and the LD stands for linked data. So this is just a protocol that's developed as part of the WWW consortium. Um, it's based on simple JSON data structures, but there's a set of guidelines to follow when you're using JSON-LD. Uh, this is just an example of a JSON-LD data structure here. Uh, these at tags here are key values. They have specific meaning within the JSON-LD protocol. In this case, it's just declaring that this content below is of the person type of JSON-LD. It has an ID attribute, which basically points to the specific object of interest. And then there are a number of other attributes like name, John Lennon, born 1940, and then his early spouse was Cynthia Lennon. So again, again, this is just an example from the JSON-LD site, just to kind of give you a flavor of what JSON-LD looks like. And I just want to kind of point this out, and this is Nothing is ever simple in this world, and especially in technology. So you really need to go to the jsonld.org website for more information about JSONLD. I certainly don't know all the details and how to use it. What I have learned in just my short time of working within this context is that JSONLD can be packaged, the content can be packaged in many different ways. They're all correct, and I personally don't know the best way of packaging packaging certain things. Now on the JSON-LD site, they have a checker that you can make sure that everything works correctly, but there's no clear direction exactly how things should be structured within the JSON data structure itself. So we'll see how this evolves down the road here. So now how does EDI use sitemaps.org and schema.org metadata? <clears throat> EDI generates the sitemaps table of contents metadata for all latest revision data package landing pages. Now I just kind of want to clarify this. Our content resides in a data repository that exposes content, say binary and format. Whereas the portal site, which is the EDI, it's the portal.edirepository.org presents things in a human readable format, in the HTML format. It's still recommended that most users go to these landing pages because they package it and present it in a way that we believe is the best way for you to understand that data package, as opposed to reading the raw XML metadata or looking at the raw binary data from the repository itself. So our sitemaps.org file contains links to our landing pages on our data portal, even though our data portal is not necessarily considered part of our data repository. It's just an interface to that repository. We also refresh our sitemaps data on an hourly basis, so any new data that is added to our repository will be picked up within that framework. And then EDI generates the schema.org metadata for all our data package landing pages on demand. So when you as a user or a search engine goes to that landing page, it literally looks up the metadata, creates the JSON-LD, and then presents it back to that search engine or you, the user. 
The user, however, generally doesn't see this because the metadata is embedded in the head element of the landing page. So unless you actually view source from your HTML page, it's completely transparent to you as the end user. We generate all our schema.org and our sitemaps.org metadata on a server called seo.edirepository.org. It's accessible at the URL that you can see there. If you're interested in seeing the raw content, I'll show you an example and I'll actually show you that, you know, generating it in, in real time. Um, but there's a lot of, you know, uh, details that are not necessarily useful to an end user or the search engine in terms of the generation. So it's just really what you see at that web page that is pulled out and indexed. So here's kind of a graphical diagram of our sitemap structure. We have a sitemap index file. Uh, that file is located on the portal.edirepository.org website and in the root directory. And that file then has links to a number of other files, which are the actual sitemap files. We have nine of these files right now, beginning at sitemap zero up to sitemap eight. And we have kind of an arbitrary value here, but we just basically pack 5,000 URLs into each one of these files. As I mentioned earlier, you can have up to 50,000 URLs per file, um, but our 5K uh, limit was basically an arbitrary decision. This is an example of what our sitemap index file looks like. Uh, the index file, as I mentioned, points to the actual sitemap file. It's just, again, a very simple XML structure. And those are the URLs that point to the physical sitemap files on the portal website. Here's an example of the actual sitemap file. Again, a very simple structure. As I mentioned earlier, we're not using any of the optional content within this XML. But this directly points to the data package landing page in our portal website. So we have, as I mentioned, 5,000 links per file. Uh, the last file obviously does, is not complete. We don't have that, that um, fixed number that fits in there perfectly. But it's pretty simple and it's pretty easy to follow this. And what happens then is the search engine reads this URL and then it literally goes to that URL and begins to look for the schema.org JSON LD metadata. The way we generate the uh, schema.org metadata, this is a UML sequence diagram if you're familiar with UML, but it's basically time going down and then actions to the right. These are actors within the environment. This is just more of a uh, probably succinct way to describe the interactions. So this first step is that the search engine uh, will begin to index the landing page of the data um, portal. The data portal itself would retrieve metadata from PASTA, which is our physical data repository. That data package metadata would be returned to the portal. Then the portal would make a request to our SEO server for the JSON-LD metadata. The SEO server, however, has to get the same metadata from our data repository so that it can pull that content out generate the JSON-LD, and then it returns that JSON-LD back to our portal server. So before any of the HTML is displayed or consumed by that search engine, it has to do those two steps to uh, generate the HTML content. It then renders that data package HTML, returning it to the search engine, and then the search engine then indexes the JSON-LD. Now, I just want to mention, too, that many search engines, even though you may have sitemaps and schema.org content and protocols on your site, they still may index the other content on your web pages as they do um, without schema.org. So you may have a mix of results in terms of uh, search when you go to either the general search or to the data set specific search. Here's an example of the raw content from the SEO EDI repository, the SEO server itself. Now all I'm doing in this URL is stating that I want the schema.org content for this particular data set. If I were to go to that website and get that, you'll see that the website that returned, it's all blank. But if you look at this page source, and let me go ahead and increase that. Now we can actually see the full content for the schema.org JSON LD content here. So it tells me that the context is schema.org, that this is a data set. This particular data set has a title. 
Um, there's a URL which points directly back to our data portal itself. Uh, there's a broader description. There's a description of the Environmental Data Initiative repository. We have things like keywords in here, the date that it was published, and then the primary identifier as the DOI for this particular data package. Now, if we actually go to the portal site and we do the same thing, this is going back to that sequence diagram. After the portal web service contacts pasta, returns that metadata, returns the JSON-LD, it embeds it into the HTML. Here you can see that the JSON-LD is embedded as a script within the head section of the HTML, so you'll never actually see this being presented directly through the browser. If we were to go to this particular page, and we look again at the page source, let me go ahead and increase this a little bit. Down here, we can see the exact same metadata that we saw before in the JSON-LD format. This now is embedded within the HTML of our data package landing page that was obtained from our data portal site. Okay, so how does the SEO affect the data that we currently have stored in the EDI repository? Well, as I mentioned, well, th this is just a graphic from the Google Search Engine Console. Um, if you work with Google at all in terms of the search engine optimization, you will have access to this type of information. But what it just basically shows you that we began based, you know, to work within this uh, context at the end of August, and that we've slowly been indexing pages within our system. So this is as of yesterday. Um, we have nearly 8,000 valid pages that have been indexed via the sitemaps file protocol. We still have roughly about 30,000, so about 32,000 to go to complete our entire index of our corpus of data within our repository. So this is not a fast process. You can see it's somewhat steerwise steer incremental. We had a number of errors in here also. We still have 160 pages with error. There's a lot of residual effect from the robots.txt uh, disallow components. And Google, you know, eventually will get through most of our content, but it's kind of a slow process, but it, it is working. And we're pretty impressed with, you know, the content getting up there and how seamless it was to actually work with this environment. What does it mean for the data producer who contributes content to our site? So if you go to the data, site, data set search for Google, and in this example, I just searched for the term cyanotoxins, you'll see a list, we got basically, there's I think total of six hits, I didn't show the last one down here, but the environmental data repository and the portal.edirepository.org website was at the very top of this particular list. This is how Google presents the content um, from the JSON-LD, the schema.org metadata. This top link is a URL back to the data package landing page. Uh, we have when this data set was published, uh, where it was published, the area covered and a brief description. This is in essence the abstract from the metadata. And the thing that I found actually really kind of cool is that Google has the resources to do things like find related links in scholarly articles. And in this case, there were two articles that cited this particular data package. Now I don't know the details of how Google is doing that, but I presume it's based on the digital object identifiers that are associated with the data package and how those are cited within those manuscripts. So there's a similar pro project called Scolex that is doing something very similar. But even Scolex does not have the resources of search engine companies like Google or Yahoo or some of the other search engine companies. So it really works out well that they can put a lot of this effort into their processing to do the kind of work that we'd really like to see. And we have a very simple process of embedding the sitemaps and the schema.org metadata into our web pages so that Google and other search engines can index them and produce results like this. So it's really kind of cool, I think. There are other initiatives using sitemaps.org and schema.org um, metadata. One of those is the EarthCube Project 418. 
Um, there's a whole list of efforts or initiatives that um, Project 418 is doing, but they're basically providing best practices for how to use the schema.org metadata and what attributes that we should be embedding within the metadata to more effectively expose the data packages to the broader search engine world. They're also developing an indexer of their own that will be very specific for, I think, um, Earth-based data. And then also they're working uh, with Google and the schema.org groups, um, other, you know, the other search engine groups that are developing the schema.org to extend schema.org and to improve the vocabularies that are being used to expose these scientific data packages. So it's working out really well that EarthCube um, Project 418 is doing this. Similarly, Data One is part of this process. Uh, they are also using sitemaps.org and schema.org metadata to expose the content within Data One to the broader search engine community. They're also investigating the use of the schema.org as a way to basically introduce a new member node type, which will simplify um, the member nodes so that it's a lightweight approach to indexing and synchronization to data one, as opposed to the heavier weight methods where you have to stand up a true member node API for synchronization with data one. So I think it's a really nice approach to simplify some of the, the more difficult tasks that we have within the technology world for data repositories. What are some of the takeaways from what we've learned? Well, one, that it's an evolving technology. So there's still a lot to be learned here. We're very new to this ourselves, but it's pretty exciting to see how easy it was. Therefore, I think it's fairly low barrier to support for the data repositories that are out there. Uh, one benefit of like using Data One, if you are a member node of Data One and Data One is providing this, then you as the repository, you will get that additional benefit of adding your data to Data One as a aggregator for that metadata and the data. It's seamless for data providers. Um, if you are the generator of environmental data and you work with one of the data repositories that is producing the sitemaps and schema.org metadata, you really don't have to do anything special. It's just a side effect of working with that particular repository. Search engines also have much greater resources for perfecting their search tools. And as I mentioned, you know, Google has the resources. They have this data set search initiative. You know, we in the academic world um, have to live off of soft money. We don't have that much grant money to spend to you know, really refine the search techniques as much as these search engine companies. So it works out really well. It's a win-win for everybody. And basically, I would just say stay tuned for future improvements because I think things are gonna change. And I think this is just one vector for improving search for environmental data. And I think that's about all I have to say. It's, as I mentioned, kind of new to us. And, you know, this is just kind of a brief overview of what we're doing. So at this point, I'll just uh, open the webinar to any questions. Thanks, Mark. That was, that was really a, a really nice presentation. And I, I appreciate uh, how clear it was. Um, oh, thank you. I thought it was really nice the way you, you presented both the sitemaps framework as well as the schema.org. Um, I did want to kind of add or ask your opinion. You know, in my mind, these are somewhat distinct technologies. And, uh, you know, in data one, we focused a lot on the schema.org, which is really exciting. And you mentioned that it was part of the linked data framework. And I think that's a really critically important benefit of the schema.org approach is that it's linked data, which means that it's HTTP, it's URI, and uh, most excitingly, it's RDF. And because RDF, which is the resource description framework, that's the underlying model of linked data. And uh, that is the um, vocabulary that a lot of uh, controlled terms are being developed in like, like SCOS, is based in RDF, uh, OWL ontologies are based in RDF. So you mentioned that it was linked data and it's extensible. And when you look at who's leading this effort up at, at Google with Natasha Noy, you know, who's been a really a leading computer scientist investigating the development of OWL ontologies and support of the protege ontology editor, et cetera. I think that, you know, for me, although sitemaps 
and schema.org really work hand in hand with sitemaps taking care of the search engine optimization part. The schema.org represents a, the, the major search engines endorsing a completely consistent metadata schema formulated in RDF and linked data. And, and that's a huge opportunity for LTER and the rest of the scientific community to get around this babble of all different vocabularies and what they mean, even including things like Dublin Core or EML and consolidate onto schema dot, or at least map to schema.org to have very consistent interpretation. Uh, that, thank you so much. That's a great extension to the, the, the discussion itself, the narrative. The, the only thing I would add is that the, the other part that I'm very impressed about is that it's an in, independent standard or approach being um, endorsed by most all the search engines that I'm familiar with. It's not just Google pushing this. I mean, and, and I think that's what really is a stellar part of this whole you know process yeah i agree but you know when because you, you're right it's like microsoft with bing and it's yahoo and um what the there, there's a couple of others but you're right it's all the big search engines the weird thing is that schema.org has been around for like what seven eight years now well and, that, yeah so i didn't know that i didn't i don't know the history of schema.org all that well so and json JSON LD as well has been around for a long time. So my view about why this has really taken off recently, aside from Google basically embracing it and, and you know, affirming this is the direction they want to go, is that the JSON LD, the LD, that linked data enables you to serialize RDF vocabularies into JSON, right? And then expose them um, in your head uh, uh, well, you know, in your, your web page head. And uh, um, that makes it easier, I think, from what I've heard from a lot of developers, rather than serializing RDF into XML, which can be a pain in the katoozie. But serializing RDF into JSON LD is pretty darn straightforward. And I think it's the merger of that JSON LD with, you know, the development of the RDF vocabularies and schema.org coupled with the endorsement by Google that makes this like so exciting. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm really stoked yeah. and I'm, I'm stoked to hear the work you've been doing on it. It's great. Yeah. You know, and I certainly don't have the, the background that you're explaining here to really emphasize the, the importance. The only thing I could tell you though, is that for us, it's been a very low barrier to entry. I mean, it, it hasn't, it hasn't been difficult at all to actually stand this up. In fact, I think, the sitemaps and the schema.org processing in, in our approach is still evolving, you know, by no means are we, you know, at the end of our, our work here. Um, but it was probably literally less than a week's effort to get this up and running. And so it's pretty exciting that we can achieve so much with so little effort. Yeah. And you know, at the upcoming all scientists meeting, there's going to be a, a couple of at least several work sessions on semantics. I think Kristen, you're, you're co-leading one of those, and we're going to hear from some leading efforts in environmental oncologies. And the thing to really keep in mind, you know, is that those are based on RDF. They are, the terms are referenceable through HTTP URIs. And so with the, with the Google data set extensions to schema.org, the semantics of those vocabularies will also be um, re relatively straightforward and easy uh, to map to and to uh, disclose for discovery. So it all kind of hooks up and it's pretty exciting. Are there any other questions, comments, discussion points? Well, I just would like to thank everybody for attending. Um, you know where to get in touch with us, so feel free to drop us a line at uh, info at e environmentaldatainitiative.org.